The fall of the USSR really started with some political changes that happened in the mid-1980s. Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in the USSR, and he was open to reform. He was willing to make drastic changes in Russia. One change he made was known as glasnost, or openness, which was Gorbachev's policy of allowing freedom of expression for Soviet citizens. Another change was perestroika, and that's when Gorbachev loosened government controls of the Soviet economy and allowed more economic decisions to be made at the local level. Additionally, in terms of the economy, Gorbachev was willing to cut spending on nuclear weapons and defense in order to help revitalize the Soviet economy in other areas. So this is a picture of Mikhail Gorbachev, and he was popular in Western countries because he was open to changing things and he allowed more freedom of expression, but he was often criticized in the USSR. While Gorbachev was in power, the USSR weakened economically. Inflation, which is rapidly rising prices, decreased production, and decreased worker productivity paralyzed the economies of Eastern Europe, which were part of the Soviet Union. By 1989, high prices and food shortages caused many people living in Soviet states to become dissatisfied or unhappy with communism. And this unhappiness led to movements for democracy and capitalism, which started gaining strength in these economically weak areas of Eastern Europe. This caused many Soviet states to consider breaking away from the USSR. It's really important to note from a historical perspective that as these countries in Eastern Europe were considering breaking apart from the Soviet Union, in 1989, Gorbachev pledged not to interfere with states that were making democratic changes. And this represents a big difference between Gorbachev and Soviet leaders before him. He said he was not going to stop democratic changes from happening in Eastern Europe. Another important event that represented the weakening of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War was the fall of the Berlin Wall. In October of 1989, East Germany's communist government falls. It was replaced with a new communist government, but this new government ended the travel restrictions between East and West, meaning people could move freely to either side of the wall. In November of 1989, the Brandenburg Gate at the Berlin Wall opened, and crowds rushed to the wall to celebrate. In the following days, citizens of Berlin opened huge holes in the wall, and eventually the entire structure was torn down. The fall of the Soviet Union seemed even more certain as the Soviet Union itself started to break apart. The USSR was made of 15 different countries that were lumped together into a union that was controlled by one government. Now, even though it was made of 15 countries, it was dominated mostly by Russia. Non-Russian countries resented the dominance of Russia in Soviet policies, and with the relaxed atmosphere of glasnost, hatred and nationalism between the Soviet states became more intense. In 1990, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia became the first countries to break away from the USSR. There were three countries in Eastern Europe. Another sign of the end of the Cold War was when Gorbachev began losing his political authority. After a failed coup, which is a surprise attempt to take over a government, in August of 1991, most of the USSR lost faith in Gorbachev as their leader. The smaller countries looked for home rule, which means they wanted to separate or be independent from the Soviet Union. Russia, the dominant country, turned away from Gorbachev and instead looked to their politician Boris Yeltsin as their new leader. By December of 1991, all the independent states had broken apart from the USSR, meaning all the other countries besides Russia. They had broken and become independent. Now, with no Soviet Union left to rule over, Gorbachev resigned, and the Soviet Union was dissolved. The Soviet Union gained strength after World War II, but then weakened during the 70s, 80s, and early 90s in comparison to the U.S. On the other hand, Japan, which had been devastated economically and was socially and politically unstable after World War II, was able to experience 
steady growth and development after World War II because of U.S. General Douglas MacArthur. MacArthur was in charge of organizing Japan's government after World War II, and MacArthur wanted to set up a fair system to avoid future wars, and so he guided the political and economic recovery of Japan. In 1947, a new Japanese constitution was created, and this constitution included a Bill of Rights and set up a representative government. One of the rules Japan had to follow after their surrender in World War II was that they were not permitted to build up an army. Additionally, MacArthur helped to successfully organize the banking and agricultural systems of Japan in order to lay a foundation or structure their economic recovery. 